Do I have any regrets on buying my Volkswagen van? Uh, after the recent shenanigans related to the repairs, I've learned to be a bit wiser. I've got to get the other side done. Um, I've got to shop around, I've got to buy the parts on eBay, and get them brought in and do it myself. Well, I would do it myself if I had the space. But what I will be doing is um, basically getting the parts in and getting the price for somebody to do it for us because the does seem that people are overinflate stuff. Um, prices are made up. But the the other side of this being, if I didn't have me van, I'd have a car. And if I had a car, would I be sat having a cup of tea at the side of the beach? The answer to that question is probably no. Because um, like April's having a nap in the back of the van at the minute because we're picking the kids up from school. Um, but they're, they're not due for another 45 minutes, so come down, had a cup of tea, and sat by the van, and, you know, sat by the beach. This is why we got the van in the first place, because we're two young kids. I mean, it's like when we went to Barcelona, uh, we were just stopping overnight at the Abyss Hotel, and it, it was the cheap budget horrible one. Um, but I had to get two rooms because of the kids, so it cost me a hundred euros and fifty euros each. Doesn't sound a lot, but a hundred euros for one night when I don't know if you can see this far where that comes out, um, sort of curves around and goes out at the end of the beach. There, there's about 16 camper vans there that are all parked for free. Where this boardwalk is, where you see the, the white lifeguard thing, as you come, well, just the other side of that, there's another load of parking. There's about another 10 to 14 camper vans parked there for free. The van would pay for itself in virtually no time at all when we drive, try, uh, drive around. When the school holidays start, we'll be moving around a bit more. So the answer is, is it was it worth it? The answer is yes. Um, even just for these things, you know, we're just sitting at the side of the road having a cup of tea. It's worth it. We do this on a regular basis. Um, have I got any plans for changing the van? Well, I'm going to take the front front of rear bumper off. There's a bumper kit that's available uh, from Poland, which will actually put a skirting kit all the way around the vehicle um, and tied it up quite considerably. Uh, the main reason I'm bothering with that is the bumpers on here have been stitched. I don't know if you I don't know if you're aware what stitching is. Uh, let's have a look. Yeah. It's been stitched together you see. It's a bit tacky so that's gonna go. Change all that. And the same with the front, it's been stitched because it's, it's been in a front end bang somewhere. So that's gonna go change the, change the bumpers and tidy it up. Um, we'll, we'll eventually be respraying the whole thing, tidying it up. But interior wise, you probably noticed one of the seats is gone now. It's actually still in the back because the MOT is gonna be due in another four months, four or five months. When that goes in, I want to see if I can remove the seats because I don't think the seats are actually part of the vehicle, if you know what I mean. It's not actually down that they actually exist. So if that's the case, that middle seat will be going and a rock and roll bed will be going in at the back um, or I'll convert the back seat. But I want to take the middle bit out because I can put a small kitchen area in there. Also make it so it actually folds down as a bed. Um, I want to put an awning on the top as well that comes out obviously on the side and possibly a roof rack and other bits and pieces once I get going. Uh, so yes, it's, it's worth it. And the other thing with this for me is I know a lot of people wouldn't invest this much money in an old van, but it's one of those, it's more than a car to us. It's it's. It's freedom in many ways. It's access to the road, it's access to 
from where we are we can drive to Portugal, we can drive to France, Holland, Germany, all from the van so it's worth tidying it up, upgrading it and making sure it's not only roadworthy but beyond that get it overhauled and make sure everything's running like a well-oiled machine. Um, the oil leak I've got has gone and the guys actually fixed that when they did the what do they call it drive shaft so that that's sorted but I want to change the oil filter and oil next anyway so that's got to come out and I've got to do the the CB joint on this side the right hand side so I've got got a bit of spending to do on it in the next couple of months but like I said I don't mind I don't mind spending a like 100 euros a month or something it? because it's we get it back in the long term because we use it um, the other side of that being that we don't have any breakdowns because it's been done and if you look at a new vehicle how much would one of these cost I would estimate at least sixteen thousand pounds you know for a similar sort of setup um, and if you put a deposit down and paid monthly the monthly installments would be more than the hundred euros a month Yes, you're getting a newer vehicle, but it's costing you a lot more. So I'd rather just invest bit by bit, um, get four or five years out of it, and then decide if we're going to keep it longer than that, or downgrade or upgrade. Downgrade, when I say downgrade or upgrade, I'm all about size-wise. The, re the reason this is another um, good idea is there's a guy that's got the bigger one of this, the, the one with the, the high top. Uh, I met him down on the beach, um, at, well, the jetty at the other end, because he was saying he had the Peugeot Boxer, the high top long wheelbase one. Couldn't park it anywhere. So he, he went back to the van he had for the last 20 years because this size you can get in anywhere. It's not any longer than, well, it ain't much longer than a normal car. But still got all the functionality of a camper van. Alright, thanks for watching.